Hey, what's up, my YouTube family? This is your host, DP100, and you is now watching 100 TV. And today I have a short story on the legendary basketball player that came from Staten Island, New York, and his name was Sandy Brock. Before I start this video, I just want to send my condolences to the family and friends of Brock. By me doing this video, I just want to keep his name living forever. But me personally, I had new Sandy. I was a lot younger than him, and he was a staple in my neighborhood when it came to the basketball so i'm just doing this video right here so i could just keep his name alive rest in peace to sandy brock but right now let's get started sandy brock was trying to make the second big comeback of his basketball career when his life was unalive too soon brock one of the best high school plays to come out of staten island in the recent years was struck in the head in the back while sitting in a car parked outside of a deli and a gas station in staten Staten Island, New York. This is a case of a kid being in the wrong place at the wrong time, said Sergeant Brian Kennedy of the 120th Precinct Detective Squad. Brock was only 20, was in the car with a group of people who got into a dispute with two men in another car before gunfire erupted. One of Brock's friends broke the window of the other car. The suspect then pulled away and got a firearm from his trunk of his car. He had fired about 10 rounds. Brock had nothing to do with it. The suspects evaded police after a car chase, which they drove the wrong way on the Martin Luther King Expressway. During the 1994 season at Curtis High School, Brock pulled off one of the greatest comebacks I ever heard of, according to the Curtis coach, Tim Gale. He had spent three years at Curtis High School, but due to his bad grades, he had never played until his senior year. But vowing to make good as a senior, he raised his grades and he was allowed to play and he had became the leading scorer. As it made a storybook run to the PSAL quarterfinals, the 6'3 guard slash forward averaged 19 points a game and he was awarded with the Jacks Award as the bubble's top player. He was one one of the best, if not the best, Coach Gannon said. He set his mind to making the team, and that is what he had did. His first game was Thanksgiving Eve at Wagner College against rival St. Peter's. Danny Rays tapped the ball to him on the jump, and he had streaked in for a dunk. It was like a movie. Brock wanted to script another comeback this year. He enrolled in 1995 at Westchester College, but was unhappy being so far from his mother, Karen. He planned to enroll at LIU next spring and play on a scholarship on the 1998 to 1999 season. I spent half the day with him last Saturday, said Tim Hyland, a former Curtis teammate. He told me that he was looking to go to LIU, and that was the kind of guy who could do anything that he put his mind to. Brock and his mother were very close, Curtis assistant coach Steve Aponte said. When I saw her, she hugged me and said, I'm not going to see my baby no more. Then she just broke down and started crying. He had came from a tough neighborhood and he may have looked like a hardcore kid, but inside he had a warm heart. Coach Gannon said he had last saw Brock the day before he was unalive. And when he drove past Brock on Jersey Street, the two exchange waves. I'm glad that I had that last image of him, waving with a smile. The 20-year-old New Brighton youth was pronounced unalive at the Bailey Seaton Hospital from wounds in the head and the back. William Jones was found guilty on second degree and was sentenced in 1999 to 20 years to life behind bars. Brock was voted Staten Island's outstanding high school player in 1995. Ron Artest Sr., the father of the Los Angeles Lakers star Ron Artest, showed up to the Virgil to show love for Sandy and his family. I remember that night like it was yesterday, cause right where he was unalive that, I had lived about one minute away. I lived at 441 Westerville Avenue when this happened. Alright y'all, so this is my old house right here, 441 Westerville Avenue. This is about one minute away where Brock was unalive that. The gas station is right around the corner. So this is it right here y'all. This is where I was living at when that tragedy happened. It happened right around the corner from here.
And when this happened, this just shocked the whole neighborhood because Sandy was like the Kobe Bryant on Staten Island. That boy Sandy was very special on that court. So when this happened, this just shocked the whole Staten Island. And just like any other young black man just growing up in the hood, Sandy had it rough, you know? He grew up in a rough environment, but he turned the negative into a positive, and he was a legend when it came to that basketball. But his life was cut short from a situation situation that had nothing to do with him was one i'm i'm, I'm a, a former basketball player i happen to play, play play for this this good this great coach here who i'm sure he'll test to some of the violence that he's seen way before i came along and, and karen brock happens to be the mother of a i would like to say an nba nba bound player i don't know if eddie wants to elaborate on that but a very talented young man he wasn't a drug dealer he wasn't a gangster he wasn't a criminal he was a law-abiding citizen who went to curtis high school he graduated. He had a college. He had a college scholarship opportunity that when he was cut short of. And I don't know. I heard somewhere that he had gotten a letter or he got a phone call that he was accepted to a particular university, and that was not fulfilled. Why? An act of violence. So right now, I'm going to take you guys to the very same spot, the very same gas station where Sandy Brock spent his last moments. So let's go check out this footage of this gas station and we will be back shortly. Let's go. All right. So right now we is at the place wherever it happened, y'all. This is it right here. Victory Boulevard, Staten Island, New York. This is where Brock took his last moments at, right here, man. It was right here at this gas station, y'all. Mm-mm-mm. It happened right here. Let's go inside of the store real quick. And now as I think about it, you see back then I was a lot younger than Sandy, but I always looked at him like a grown man. But now as I look back, I'm just realizing now that he was a child because he had passed away when he was 20. He didn't even hit 21 yet. When you would go to a Curtis game and you watched him play ball, trust me, you had to bring your popcorn because watching him play was like a movie. Trust me, he was that good. Without a doubt, in my heart, I know that Sandy would have made it to the NBA. It's so sad because he was in a car with a group of friends and he had no idea that that would be his last night. So his friends started fighting with some other guys. So one of the people that he was with broke the other guy's window. So then after that, the other guy pulled out a weapon and started firing and he had got hit. But he had nothing to do with this. Just some senseless violence. Rest in peace to Sandy and I will keep your name living on forever. No matter what, because you was a legend and you was a staple in the New Brighton community. But not just in New Brighton, you was a staple in in the whole city so i just want to send my condolences to the whole family and friends you will be truly missed sandy i want everybody to share this story so we could teach the youth because his life was taken way too short just for some simple nonsense but it's your host dp100 and you is now watching 100 tv like comment and subscribe 100 <laughs> Sandy Brock fell victim to this awful reality on September 23, 1997. Sandy Brock, at the age of 20, was shot dead in an altercation at a gas station situated just a few blocks from here. He was doing nothing at all. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. His death was senseless and it was untimely. He had a very promising future in basketball, as many of you know, and probably with his skills would have gone to the NBA. He was one of the best high school basketball players, not only in this borough, but in the city of New York. Having spent his first three years at Curtis High School, academically ineligible to play sports. He raised his scores in his senior year and made the Curtis team. And not only did he make the team, but he became the leading scorer, leading his school to the PAL Finals. And at 6'3", he played guard forward and averaged 19 points per game. 
He was named to the Daily News All-Star Team. Uh, he was awarded the 1995 Jock Award as Staten Island's top player and was an advanced All-Star. Say that with me. Together, we stand. Divided, we fall. Together, we stand. Divided, we fall. Together, we stand. Divided, we fall. So beyond this prayer vigil, let us plan to come together for the purpose of mobilization and let us strategize. Because the only way our communities are going to change is that we who live in the community must rise to the occasion of changing the community. You are now watching 100 TV, where we always keep it 100 over here. No clickbait, no cab news, just real authentic content. The 100 West. <laughs>